Now, if you're a surface water treatment plant, lime softening is probably not a big issue for you. But if you're a groundwater system, this may be a very significant issue because of the amount of hardness and alkalinity that's in your water. While we tend to favor groundwater supplies in many areas because they don't have much contamination from the surface, the water quality is relatively stable, temperatures are stable, and if there are changes in the water quality, they're relatively slow, there are things that we need to remove from the water. Wells and groundwater supplies get contamination as a result of contact time with the aquifer. Basically, the longer the water is in the ground, the more it's dissolving the limestone and other materials that are in the rock formation. As a result, the alkalinity and hardness go up with time. We get iron, other metals dissolved like arsenic. And if you're in any contact with the surface system, where you might have organic materials uh, getting into the water supply, you'll get organics. In all aquifer systems, you're likely to have microbiological constituents. All of these things need to be removed. Hardness is related to the contact time in the aquifer. Often groundwater is hard. The question is, what's acceptable? And it all depends on where you are and how long you've been there. If we have less than 70 milligrams per liter of hardness in our water, there's a tendency for us to believe this water to be too soft. Soft water is the stuff where you get a little bit of soap, put it in the water, and you get lots and lots of bubbles that's really hard to get off. We don't really want water that's that soft. Hard water is just the opposite. You get it out of the ground, you use some soap, you don't get any bubbles, you use more soap, still no bubbles, and you tend to get a lot of soap scum. You also tend to have a problem with deposition in your hot water tank and in the pipelines. What we'd really like to have is our hardness somewhere between 70 and 120 milligrams per liter. And that's where treatment with lime softening comes into play. This is what happens when we don't get the hardness out of the water before it goes into a pipeline. This is a galvanized pipeline. It was lined. And what you can see here is uh, we've got calcium carbonate uh, that's settled in the pipeline. It's reduced this uh, two inch diameter pipeline uh, to about a three quarter inch line. If you're depending on this for water service uh, in your distribution system, uh, this will indicate to you that you really can't get water pressure to any of your customers. If this was a bigger line you're relying on fire flow for, you won't be able to get the adequate fire flow. There is no solution to solve this problem except to replace the line. So hence, lime softening is an important part of the treatment process to prevent this kind of problem from happening in your distribution system. Lime softening is one of three processes to remove hardness from the water, and it's the one we'll focus on here today. Well, ion exchange and membranes are two other alternatives. The typical lime softening system looks like this. We have a well, we pull water out of the ground, and we mix it with hydrated lime in a reactor basin. We mix the water together and then we allow it to settle before the water exits and goes into our filters. After the filtration, the water is disinfected and placed into the distribution system. The concept for a reactor design is based on retention time. Retention time is important because it tells you something about how the water moves through the reactor and how fast things will settle or may need to settle. It also is related to hydraulics and the size of the piping. We want to be able to move the water from one reactor system to the next. The first thing that we start with is a lime silo. You see a lime silo on the right here, and on the top you have a airbag system that you see on the left. The concept is that we blow the lime into the silo. We never touch it, and as a result, we need a way for the air to get out. That's what the bag's there for. The lime is a dust. It also is an exothermic reaction, meaning when it touches water, you get a very hot reaction that occurs. We don't want it on our skin because it can potentially burn us. There are a variety of ways to get the lime out of the silo and into the water. What you see here are three feeder systems. They're all based on flow pacing. So we get a certain quantity of lime out of the silo at a given time before we mix it with water. Typically, this is in some form of a slaker. What you see in this photograph is a slaker. What's happening is this is the very bottom of the lime silo. What we're doing is the lime comes out and it goes on that little conveyor belt that you see there. Down at the bottom it mixes and it kind of creates this cake dough like stuff. It mixes with a little water. It's then quickly pumped into another vessel where we mix it with more water so that we can pump it into the reactor system. The reactor is seen here. You see that yellowish, milky-looking water. That's the lime slurry mixed with the raw water. 
This water has some organics in it, so the color tends to take greater pigment. But lime is mixed with water is generally going to be yellowish. You also note in the basin outside that, the clarifier portion of the reactor, how clear that water is. That's because the lime softening reaction is a very fast reaction. It occurs within a matter of minutes. Okay, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to show you how fast this reaction occurs. I'm going to take this dipper and I'm going to put it into the uh, lime system. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see how fast this actually comes out. Okay, so what I've done is I set it here. You can see the water's uh, starting to settle very quickly. It's a uh, lime softening is a chemical reaction. It's going to settle a little bit. You can see the flock trying to stir and settle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this and I can decant off the, uh, the clean water off the top and we'll see the uh, lime sludge down in the bottom. Okay, so you can see down in the bottom, you can see a bunch of bright yellow material. That's actually the lime sludge that's down in the bottom here. And ultimately, within a minute here, I can actually decant off virtually all the water, leaving the lime sludge behind. And now I'm going to dump the lime sludge. You can see this is a bright yellow material. And then what you see in the background uh, behind the plant here, you can see where they dispose of the lime sludge at this treatment process. It's back out there. And what will happen is, is periodically, they're going to dump the lime off the bottom of the reactor here and it's going to go out there to dry. One of the problems that you have with lime sludge is it tends to form a cheesecake type uh, consistency. Like it's been in the refrigerator a long time, it'll get hard on top and then it's kind of mushy in the middle. It's very hard to dewater.